Hello everyone! I am a graphics programmer, which means that I tell computers how to draw images to make up for my own lack of artistic talent. This pessimism is most applicable to stylized rendering, in which we use shader techniques to make our games less realistic and more abstract. You may be familiar with cell shading, half toning, or dithering, but today we're going to talk about how an image effect made for denoising medical imagery in the 1970s has become the driving force behind a modern modern post-processing effect that transforms images and games into stylistic paintings. Variance, stochasticism, randomness, or noise is at the core of many concepts in image processing and computer graphics. Most of the time, we are trying to intentionally generate noise to add variety to assets and effects. But sometimes, when data is gathered with low quality tools, or we cut corners on simulations for the sake of speed, we end up with noticeably inaccurate data, which we also refer to as noise. Some examples you may be familiar with are JPEG artifacts or real-time ray tracing. In cases like this, we want to denoise the data or smooth out the image to make it fit for use or presentation. Denoising is a very difficult problem since we want to smooth out the data but also maintain high frequency details like edge lines. For example, consider this image that I have destroyed in Photoshop with a noise filter. How could we go about restoring the original image? A simple first approach would be applying a box blur. For each pixel, we center a square around it and then average all the pixels in that square, setting the pixel to the average color. If we blur enough to remove the noise, we can see that we've lost pretty much all sense of form and detail. A more sophisticated approach would be to Gaussian blur the image, which is logically the same as a box blur, but instead we use a Gaussian function to give more weight to pixels closer to the center pixel when calculating the average. With a Gaussian blur, we retain form a little bit more, but it's still not even close to good enough. Fortunately, in the modern era, we have companies like NVIDIA developing machine learning algorithms for denoising, which are extremely effective. But for us indie peasants, we have to settle with something like the bilateral filter, the most common solution for denoising images invented sometime around 1995. Unfortunately for you, this video is not about the bilateral filter. Instead, we're going to go back, back to the past. Sometime in the 70s, a man named Michiyoshi Kuwahara was working on the early medical imaging of heart muscles. Obviously, 50 years ago, our medical machinery was not nearly as advanced, and so the images he captured would come out very noisy and hard to work with. Realizing this, Kuwahara devised his own denoising technique. Similar to the box and Gaussian blur, we will center a square over our pixel. Then, we divide this square into four sectors. For each sector, we will calculate the average color and the standard deviation. Lastly, we pick the sector with the lowest variance and set the center pixel to the average color of that sector. Thus was born the Kuwahara filter, one of the world's first edge-preserving, denoising image processing algorithms. The edge preservation works like so. If the pixel is a little outside of an edge, then the quadrant with the lowest variance won't be the edge. But if the pixel is on the edge, then the quadrant with the lowest variance will be the edge, ensuring that we blur largely homogeneous areas while still maintaining details like edge lines. If we apply the Kuwahara filter to our original noisy image, we'll see that... Oh. Well... It seems like it does a pretty bad job, actually. Uh, thankfully, we can use the Kuwahara filter for something else. What's up, YouTube? Ace Roller come back at you with another sick Unity tutorial. Today I'm teaching you how to turn your game into a stylized oil painting masterpiece using the Kuwahara filter. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is follow my link in the description to download the Kuwahara script and shader. The sick thing is that I already did all the work for you, so like, you don't even need to know how it works. Here I've got a game scene set up, but 
you don't need to worry about that. All you gotta do is take this script and drag it onto the camera, and then you put this shader here in the field, and then you up the kernel size a little bit. This is all you have to do. It's so easy. All right, let's press play to see our new amazing visuals. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, so the filter has some problems. First off, the filter is actually really susceptible to noise, which is funny considering the entire point is to get rid of it. If we apply the filter to the original image and compare it with the Kuwahara filtered noisy image, we can see that the noise is still very noticeable and affects the output considerably. This means that the Kuwahara filter really sucks at denoising, but what people did notice is that the artifacts the filter produces are similar to that of brush strokes in paintings. This makes sense, as the Kuwahara filter effectively simplifies image features. Unfortunately, even in the context of stylized rendering, the original Kuwahara filter falls short. The artifacts are just too strong, and the image loses all detail at a larger kernel size, which is necessary for sufficient stylization. The Kuwahara filter would lie dormant for nearly 30 years until Giuseppe Papari and his team proposed an extension to the basic Kuwahara filter. But what exactly did they change? The original Kuwahara filter suffers from box-shaped artifacts, which are pretty obvious. The square kernel is mostly to blame for this, making the image look like it was drawn with one of those weird, square-shaped markers. To remedy this, they replaced the square kernel with a circular kernel. The square shape isn't the only issue with the kernel. The four sectors end up not being enough to sufficiently preserve edge lines, as we miss out on a lot of possible angles. Papari found that with eight sectors, the filter could identify and preserve edge lines much better. The next change has to do with weighting. The original Kuwahara filter works like the box blur, every pixel contributes the same amount to the final calculations. This naive weighting confuses the filter at large kernel sizes, causing strange artifacts that look like this. If we instead use Gaussian weights, these artifacts should go away. The last change Papari's team made to the original Kuwahara filter was how it determines the final color output. Previously, we would set the pixel to the average color of the sector with the lowest standard deviation, but what happens if two sectors have the same standard deviation? No one knows! The outcome is indeterminate. The GPU will randomly choose one of the sectors which causes flickering when the effect is used in real time. Obviously, this is unacceptable, but to fix it, we need to get a bit more sophisticated. For each sector, we will use its standard deviation to calculate a new weight. If we divide 1 by 1 plus the standard deviation, then sectors with high variance will have a weight close to 0, but sectors with low variance will have a weight closer to 1. We take this new weight and multiply it with the average color of the sector, then add it to the total color sum. Lastly, we divide the end result by the sum of the weights to average the sector colors. This is a major improvement since it removes the indeterminate behavior of the original Kuwahara filter and it removes all conditional logic. That's all the changes Papari made, so let's go over the new effect in its entirety. First, we center a square over our pixel. For each pixel of the kernel, we first want to check if we are inside the circle that fits inside the square, since we are now using a circular kernel. Next, we need to determine this pixel's contribution to its sector. To figure out what sector the pixel is in, we use this equation. Essentially, these two numbers are the angle range of the sector, so if the angle of the pixel's position is within that range, then we know we're on its sector. Unfortunately, this means we need to check each pixel 8 times. After this, we calculate the pixel output as I described earlier, and we're done. Simple. Papari and his team dubbed this new effect the Generalized Kuwahara Filter. Why is it generalized? I have no idea. Either way, the results speak for themselves. Edge lines are much more preserved, the box artifacts are gone, and the image is still very stylized. These improvements are incredible, and all we have to do is calculate 8 Gaussian weights per pixel of our kernel, which 
for my image was 10 by 10, so that adds up to... 800 weights calculated per pixel. But GPUs are fast nowadays, so I'm sure it's perfectly fine to present in a YouTube video. <laughs> It's the performance police! It turns out, calculating 800 Gaussian weights per pixel is borderline illegal. Our frame time is currently about 13 milliseconds on my GPU, which is extremely slow. The reason it's so bad is because Gaussian functions are extremely expensive. Thankfully, we can just ditch the Gaussian function entirely and instead approximate the weight with polynomials. Our polynomial function looks like so, where zeta controls how much the sectors overlap at the filter origin, and eta controls how much the sectors overlap at their boundaries. With the proper parameters, the result is a weighting function similar to the Gaussian function. If you're interested in the formulation of this function, the paper in the description goes quite in depth. Substituting the Gaussian weights with our new polynomial weights, the image looks pretty much exactly the same, except our performance has improved considerably. But what else about the filter can we improve? Since our goal has changed from denoising to replicating painterly stylized visuals, the generalized filter does quite well, but still isn't sophisticated enough for our eventual real-time rendering use case, which becomes apparent when we look at the effect in motion. If we start rotating Sheik around, the generalized Kuwahara filter will freak out at extreme angles on highly detailed areas such as the face and the hands. This is because the generalized filter still has one crucial flaw. When you're painting or drawing, generally, you will change your brush size to adapt to how detailed the area of your painting is, whether by hand or with pressure sensitivity. Currently, our generalized Kuwahara filter operates as if you were using the same brush size for your entire painting, leading to what we will call clustering artifacts, those areas of the image where the filter becomes unintelligible. If we want to simulate a dynamic brush size, then we're going to need to calculate some more information about the image, specifically the directional information, which is thankfully very simple. We start by convolving the Sobel operator with our image to approximate the partial derivatives of the RGB values. With these partial derivatives, we calculate the structure tensor, a matrix that describes the distribution of said partial derivatives. Next, we calculate the eigenvalues of the structure tensor and use them to calculate the eigenvector that points in the direction of the minimum rate of change. This all sounds very complicated, but all we're doing is figuring out what direction a pixel points in. Using the eigenvector information, the filter kernel can now angle itself and stretch itself to better fit image details and edges, but will still work like the generalized filter for homogeneous regions of the image. This new filter is called the Anisotropic Kuwahara filter, and is described in this article from the first edition of GPU Pro. The namesake of the filter comes from the new Anisotropic kernel that contorts to image features. As you can see, the result results are spectacular, no more clustering artifacts, and it looks great in motion as our chic model looks cohesive regardless of the angle. Wow! It's the part of the video where I get to show you all the cool stuff I did with the filter! Let's start by comparing the three Kuwahara filters. Each one has its own aesthetic appeal, but in most cases, the anisotropic filter wins out. This is most obvious with stuff like hair. The basic and generalized filters get tripped up, but the anisotropic filter manages to smoothly stylize both the face and the hair without issue. I experimented a lot with different shader combinations, and the one I found most interesting was with dithering. If we dither before we Kuwahara filter, not much interesting happens, but if we dither after we Kuwahara filter, then we can get some really interesting, high contrast visuals. Since the dither patterns are only noticeable on dark areas, it has this really neat juxtaposition of painterly and pixel art shaded visuals. Here's a few images I made with the effect. 
Moving on from static images, the Kuahara filter is most effective when used on more realistic, detailed renders. If we try and apply the filter to an already stylized piece of art, it isn't going to do much and kind of just makes it look worse. Because of this, I won't be using the grass field for real-time demonstrations. Instead, we're going back to our good friend Final Fantasy XIV. Applying the Kuahara filter to the game, I think it looks really nice just on its own. My character looks a lot more anime-y, and a lot of the texture issues of the game sort of disappear due to the denoising smoothing effect. The filter also has this cool depth of field effect for free, as objects in the distance get turned into painterly blobs. I found that applying a sharpness filter after the Kuahara filter helps to bring out the painterly look by further accentuating the edges between the blocks of color, and this was all I really needed to do for a basic, decent looking Kuahara filter effect pipeline, which I think proves its potential use case as the main focus of a game's rendering pipeline. These new shaders have been released as part of my G-Shade shader pack, so if you want to play around with them, the link is in the description. Several people have posted pictures with my shaders on social media, and words can't express how much I appreciate that, so thank you. Moving on, I was interested in other use cases beyond the color buffer. One problem I've been thinking about a lot lately is edge detection anti-aliasing. The only game in the world that has done edge detection perfectly is Man Manifold Garden, a game with such a complex problem space they had to invent their own anti-aliasing technique. Apparently, they did a presentation on said technique, but I can't find it, so I am left awake at night wondering what their secrets are. Back to Final Fantasy XIV, we can stack our fog shader multiple times in a row to create a nice color gradient into the distance. Then, we can do simple edge detection by comparing neighboring depth and normal values, which is where our problem arises, the yucky aliasing on the edges just looks terrible. This is where I thought the Kuahara filter could help. When we apply the filter, the edges get smoothed out and we end up with a neat ink drawing sort of aesthetic, which I think looks pretty cool. Unfortunately, this is very far removed from what Manifold Garden looks like, but it was a neat experiment nonetheless. I have lots of other ideas involving the Kuahara filter, such as texture space Kuahara filtering, but that will have to wait for another video since I think it will be a very long and interesting topic. Do you know what doesn't need to wait for the next video though? That's right, Ace Rolla's Patreon plug. After much thought and some requests, I've decided to start a Patreon. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of rewards right now because I work full time and all my time at home is spent making these videos, so I can't really afford to make Patreon exclusive content without returning to the psych ward. But if you'd like to support me and the hundreds of hours I put into each one of my videos, I'd appreciate it very much. All Patreon proceeds will go to a dragon horde that my spiel plushie will sit on top of. Anyways, this concludes the story of how an image effect meant for medical imagery has transformed into an amazing stylized rendering effect. Despite failing miserably at its original use case, it did eventually find a home. I'm sure there's a metaphor in there somewhere. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time.